I'm kind of kind of with them on the overall intent. Yes. It's the how. And this seems to be a document more about the overall intent. How can you think anyone would ban memes? Um, because you're the government, maybe, and we've known the government to do stupid things before. Any government. doesn't need to be the European government. <laughs> could be any government. Uh, Brexit? <laughs> um, I mean, I could start naming some things that have been done that aren't quite... Um, Agreement reached on digital copyright rules. I should I should modify this site to, to put agreement in quotes. Um, it, yes, yes, some kind of agreement was reached apparently on February 13th in the trilogue. So not a dialogue, but a trilogue. Three parties. I believe it's the Commission on the European Union, the EU Council, yes. and the EU Parliament had representatives they had a, a basically a round table literal round table meeting of of representatives from those three entities where they spent 10 hours yeah. i don't know if it was one day or just 10 hours on the one day i think it was 10 hours on the one day because they're currently on a very very tight schedule so what actually happened about a few weeks ago, about two, three weeks ago, the parliament was supposed to vote to either pass or reject Article 11 or 13, but they cancelled that vote because there was already enough feedback that countries like the Netherlands, Germany, Belgium, Luxembourg, to name a few, were going to vote against it because they, in principle, agreed to it, but they didn't felt like it had to apply to a lot of smaller companies for example so mainly what they have to do now is try in a very short amount of time come up with a new draft for parliament to vote on because the parliament's elections are going to happen may so they need to have a draft ready that they themselves agree on then it has to go to parliament who have to vote on it so if they do it any later it will be after the elections and therefore new people need to reread it and it's going to be at least another year before it can mm. be seen to again so yeah, definitely have to be done. So the idea is to get it done now yes. so that it can be voted on now. Yes. Okay. And the, the there is an upcoming vote on this alleged agreement. This agreement isn't agreed to yet until no. they vote have a final the trilogue has a final vote. Yeah. And then the trilogue more or less sends it to the par EU Parliament yes. for a final vote. So this right here is the European Parliament's version of the agreement. And then we're going to read Julia Rita's version of the agreement. Julia Rita is from the Pirate Party, and she and Alan Smith here are probably against. Yes. You know, we need to, they need to see the final text. They need to decide what basically and, the whole group is against it, the Green and Pirate yeah. Party. And, group. and that's part of the problem is there is no final text yet. Yes. They have an alleged agreeable document, but because it was the way it was written, because it was sort of uh, done by a committee or council over the course of a long thing, they only really have the notes and the transcript. Yeah. And you can go and watch the 10 hour video. They do have the uh, posted the 10. I did not watch the 10 hour video. I don't speak all the languages and I don't know how to real time translate all the languages. <laughs> so I can't even do that. But it appears that even the Trilog members yeah. don't, maybe they have it right this second. I don't know if they just got it, but last I was able to find there was no final text because all of that text has to be first final, all those notes and, and, and transcript, and they first have to be uh, transcribed and, and conglomerated and aggregated. And then it all has to be translated into all the various languages. And then it has to be presented back to the trilogue and its final form. So we don't even have its final form. This isn't even its final form, says <laughs> the Hulk. Yeah. Um, so it's basically, I mean, I don't, I think it might be slightly more common for these things not to have a published text before it because it's more like they come back together. Yeah. And it's kind of like agreeing on the minutes and basically spending a whole session. Okay, so you said this, 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 this is the text. Do you agree with this? get something else and they have basically a whole session like did we actually get on paper what we said what we come to go and then they agree to publish that okay so it's like basically going over the minutes in a way so it's so you're saying it's normal not to have the text at this point yes and my 
skepticalness and concern is like this is somewhat just a, unfounded. This maybe. is obviously a bigger issue where it obviously stands out a bit more, and obviously normally there will be a bit more time, so people might have the minutes beforehand because it might be reconvening the meeting two weeks later instead of in just a few days. Okay. So, but it is just like a small. I don't know the relative sizes, since obviously there's three parties, at least three corners of the part of the European structure is being represented, but okay. it's still going to be relatively small in European terms of people being part of this cross group agreement party committee, basically, before they, because it's the committee that wants to push this forward and put it into yeah. the parliament. So. so let's read what the European Parliament has said about the summary, uh, how the European Parliament has summarized the trilogue. They are saying that the internet platform or, or various internet platforms face incentives to pay artists and journalists for their work. I don't necessarily disagree that there's a problem there, that some artists and many journalists' work is undervalued. Some uploaded material, such as memes or GIFs, can still be shared freely. It's still, again, I, I'm skeptical because it doesn't say how, but yeah. I mean, as you said, we don't have the text yet. So we're going to get the text and we'll have to do another video. Hyperlinks to news articles accompanied by individual words or very short extracts can still be shared freely. So it sounds like Google News will survive, maybe with adjustments to yeah. however many words that is. Journalists must get a share of any copyright-related revenue <laughs> obtained by their publishing house. So that ties the revenue from the publishing house to the journalists. Sounds okay so far. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't mean that um, sarcastically. Startup platforms will be subject to lighter obligations. There's some kind of accom uh, accommodation for smaller platforms. And the directive will not impose filters. And there's a sort of a dispute there, but we'll go over that later. Uh, but they're saying it's not going to directly impose filters. It's not going to say you must implement a filter. And so let's go over their points here. Creative and news publishers will be empowered to negotiate with internet giants thanks to a deal reached on copyright rules, which also contains safeguards on freedom of expression. The deal reached between the EP and council negotiators aims to ensure the rights and obligations of the copyright law also apply to the internet, YouTube, Facebook, Google News, or some internet household names which will be most directly affected by this legislation. Legislators who also strove to ensure that the internet remains a space for the spirit. So that sounds a lot, that sounds great, but it doesn't actually tell us what the agreement is on how internet giants are going to be asked to pay for creatives and news publishers. So we're still waiting to hear what that's all about. Tech giants must share revenues with artists and journalists. This aims at enhancing rights holders' chances, notably musicians, performers, and script authors, as well as news publishers to negotiate better remuneration deals for the use of their works featured on internet platforms. Again, there's no detail there. Exactly how are these musicians, performers, and script authors going to be put on an equal or more equal playing field? It just says they can negotiate better remuneration. That's not a law. You couldn't write a law that says artists are now allowed to negotiate better deals well, against Google. That's not a law. To kind of then go back to the European institution, this is going to be a directive, not a law. Okay. So if they so I'm expecting a law, and you're saying it's not even going to be that. It's not really going to be like there's going to be parts of it, but in the end, it's up to the 28 member states to implement it as a law and how they do it. So oh, okay. in the end, this will end up probably being 20. Well, let me make it an analogy yes. for people who live in the United States who don't understand any of what you're saying. This would be like the federal government, the federal U.S. government, like the federal, this is not happening, this is like the U.S. federal government saying, we're making a new regulation on automobiles. Uh, all automobiles must have a automatic braking safety feature. Yeah. So the directive would be every state must implement a law that sets requirements for automobiles to have an automatic braking feature. So that's not quite a law. Yeah, it, it, it is a law because I haven't quite made a great analogy, but that's not quite the law. It's a law saying that other states have to do something. And then the 50 states plus Puerto Rico and other territories have to go implement the law and say, 
All right, Pennsylvania's version of this is that any vehicle over 500 pounds capable of travel, however, however they define a vehicle, maybe Utah defines a vehicle differently or whatever. And so each state has to go through and say, in our vehicle code, how do we fit this new requirement into the vehicle code so that all cars have to have automatic braking? I think that's about as good of an analogy as I can come up with on the spot. Yes. So the EU uh, trilog or or parliament at the end of the thing, at the end of the whole thing, once it's a once it's theoretically approved, would be issuing a directive that says member states must implement copyright law in compliance with these guidelines. Yep. Got it. That makes a lot more sense. However, we can still be concerned about the guidelines, right? Yes. They're still saying make tech giants share revenue with artists and journalists. How? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, locking in freedom of expression, snippets of news articles. Let me see if I make sure, make sure I can go back to the, yeah. Um, snippets of news articles will not engage the rights of the media house, which produced the shared article. The deal, however, also contains provisions to avoid news aggregators abusing this allowance. The snippet can therefore continue to appear in Google News, for example, or when an article is shared on Facebook, provided it is fairly short or very short, excuse me, quote unquote, very short. Uh, the interpretation of how many words is very short, we don't know that yet. Yes, and that's probably gonna be once again down to each country to decide for themselves. Uploading protected works for purposes of quotation, criticism, review, character, parody, or pastiche. There is a new word I don't even know. Could you look up pastiche? Oh. Artistic works in the style that imitates another work. So like a parody. So yeah, but imitate, well, an imitation. Imitation, parody, take off, rap, pastiche, yes, rap. Uh, <laughs> so the last one yeah. was like pastiche. pastiche. <laughs> okay, ensuring that memes and gifs will continue to be available and shareable on many platforms. Okay, many online platforms will not be affected. The text specifies that uploading a work to online encyclopedias in a non-commercial way, such as Wikipedia or software platforms such as GitHub will automatically be excluded. Startup platforms will be subject to lighter obligations than more established ones. Stronger negotiating rights for authors and performers. They'll be able to claim additional remuneration from the distributor, exploiting their rights when the remuneration originally agreed to is disproportionately low compared to the benefits derived by the distributor. We saw a law in Poland very close to this when The Witcher 3 got sued by the book author who signed away his rights for only like $10,000 or something like that. Yeah. And then he sued them hoping to get greater remuneration because the publisher had disproportionately benefited. That's not how, co how contract yeah. works in the U.S., but if I'm not... It works, I'm, yeah. Okay. He did end up settling the case. The, the, the Witcher, I forget the publisher's name, ended up settling the case with the man for some undisclosed amount of money. Yeah. How this directive changes the status quo. Currently, internet companies have little incentive to sign licensing agreements with rights holders because they are not considered liable for the content their users upload. This is the safe harbor provision. Yeah. They are only obligated to remove infringing content when the rights holder asks them to do so. However, this is cumbersome for rights holders and does not guarantee them a fair revenue. Making internet companies liable will enhance rights holders' chances, notably musicians, performers, and script authors, as well as news publishers and journalists, to secure fair licensing agreements, thereby obtaining fairer remuneration for the use of their works exploited digitally. This is the one I'm concerned about most. Yeah. We're going to skip the concern for a moment because we'll be talking about opponents to this as well, and we'll discuss some of our, our, our opposition then. Next steps, the deal will now be approved by the Council of Representatives, probably this week, probably tomorrow, yeah. and then sent to the European Parliament for plenary vote, which would be like the plural, the vote of all the members. Um, quotes from Axel Voss, your rapporteur. This deal is an important step towards correcting a situation which has allowed a few companies to earn huge sums of money without properly remunerating the thousands of creatives and journalists whose work they depend on. At the same time, this deal contains numerous provisions which will guarantee that the internet remains a space for free expression. These provisions were not themselves necessary because the directive will not be creating any new rights for rights holders, yet we listened to the concerns raised and chose to doubly guarantee the freedom of expression. The meme, the GIF, 
The snippet are now more protected than ever before. I am also glad that the text agreed today pays particular attention to sheltering startups. Tomorrow's leading companies are the startups of today, etc. This deal protects people's living, safeguards democracy by defending a diverse media landscape, entrenches freedom of expression, and encourages startups and technological development. It helps make the internet ready for the future, a space which benefits everyone, not only a powerful few. Okay, sounds good, but... Again, we just discussed how YouTube doesn't make a profit yet. Yeah. So where is all of this profit that YouTube is supposed to be further sharing with artists and creators and journalists, etc.? Well, it's not just YouTube, for example, and I can especially see it in European countries. Like It annoys me so much, to be honest, when I go to news websites and they literally copy other people's articles and they will... Okay. Put indeed a link in it, like according to Washington Post, they said, and then, and the, then they the entire followed, Washington Post entire article, article is in there. So this is like like a lot of the I can understand, and I have a lot of sympathy in a way towards these articles because they try to address these things, but a lot of them are too much hyperbolical and dreaming of solutions that it's just not practical. Okay. Uh, to do so the same like with a lot of the content sharing and like how it's cumbersome on the creator like I mean when you posted that video of the fake off mm -hmm. and it got posted else places I yeah. spent it hours of time just doing reverse searching and being on top mm. of that oh, now that will take well I linked loads of you to you that you'll take action against but I mean in the end if that would be my job to make content and then also have policing the internet on top of it i can see their concerns and how they want to make it easier for creators not to have to do the constant policing but once again that's kind of like a fairy tale like oh yeah we don't want them to have to spend so much time in trying to find their copyrights and having to fight it but they don't actually come with a proper solution in that sense true is the problem so what you're saying is that they're the t that maybe they're targeting that kind of behavior and not just our normal internet behavior. Yes. Okay. This is an article that was posted by the European Commission. I believe the other one we just read was the European Parliament. Mm. Uh, this was European, you, you, yeah, European Parliament. Parliament. And so the, here's the European Commission's version of it. I'll explain in a moment why it is being shown from, ar from the archive.is or archive.li website. The copyright directive, how the mob was told to save the dragon and slay the knight. For those of you who don't know nor care about what the copyright directive is, for real, is that really the tone you want to start your letter with? I'm, I'm here, I'm reading it to an entire audience. Do you really want me to be reading that sentence to an entire audience of people interested in the copyright directive? For those of you who don't know nor care, look away now. Take this test. Type in EU copyright directive into the search box in YouTube. The majority of the results in the top 20 will be passionately against it. Here are some headlines. Shocking update on the copyright directive. Europe lost the internet. How the new copyright laws will destroy the internet. Censorship machine, machine, machines? Censorship machines. Too many, too many S's in that. Censorship machines. EU to end the internet. Europe, Europe, Europe? <laughs> <laughs> Europe to ban all memes. Have fun, Brandon. <laughs> I'm already having fun. You mean now? <laughs> we already have a meme now. <laughs> of course, we know from recent elections and referendums that simple, memorable slogans, however untrue or unobtainable, can go a long way to winning over hearts, minds, and voters. And so it was that the wholly inaccurate phrases like link taxes and censorship machines started to be part of the campaign against the proposed copyright directive. Never let the truth get in the way of a catchy slogan. This is so snarky. Like, is this the European Commission? Like, I, like to quickly get a quick open, uh, open thing, European Commission funded quite a few trips of mine when I was involved in the uh, okay. European stuff. And, I wish they would ever like just wrote me a letter like that. Like oh, our okay. communication was quite formal and boring. Like Fair it would have been more interesting if they uh, were starting like that. To yeah. Me. So the idea behind the directive is to bring copyright rules into the 21st century. The current rules are very analog and designed for a world before the web. And this is we're talking about European copyright rules. So let's yes. let's remember that Europe has not had a DMCA law that uh, maybe they have something. 
I don't know what the status of European copyright law is, but this yeah. is an updating of the law, and the, U, the, the this isn't the U.S. This isn't the U.S. law that's getting updated. This is the European law that's getting updated. Yeah, it's an entirely <laughs> different country. I mean, entirely different. Yes, the, Europe was, is an entirely different country. When was the Berne Convention? Uh, 1940 something. Yeah, there hasn't really been much after that. <laughs> yeah, Berne Convention. Oh, 1886. Uh, 9 September is 1886. Hmm. So that's, if it hasn't been updated since then, yeah, that's a long time. There hasn't been much, because a lot of them still really, when I looked, like obviously I'm not into copyright that much, but I had done a bit of legal research before in this area, and a lot just keeps referencing to that. That gives me yeah. the impression there hasn't really been any updates since mm. one of the most outdated things we have. Search and social media platforms largely define the way we enjoy content today, but their market dominance has now tilted the balance in their favor and away from those who design and create things. Fair enough. I'd like more power as a creator. As it stands, big internet platforms such as Facebook and Google make a lot of money from ads that appear on their sites alongside copyrighted material. This has been a complaint of mine with Facebook. Some yeah. of my videos have been copied onto Facebook, and Facebook has no mechanism for monetizing anything for me. They allow other people to, but they don't allow me to monetize my things on Facebook. I have literally written to them and asked, and they have said, sorry, no. No explanation. As it stands, big internet platforms make a lot of money from ads. The more people view, the more money platforms can earn from those adverts. Just as Google and Facebook are being rewarded financially for, for producing amazing software, clever algorithms, exciting designs, we think authors, filmmakers, journalists, and musicians should be rewarded for their endeavors too. At the moment, the balance of power in who gets paid for such royalties resides overwhelmingly with the big Californian companies who are worth around $1 trillion. The copyright directive is an attempt to create a level playing field where everyone can gain from amazing options that the new technologies offer. Musicians, artists, video producers, and the whole creative sector will benefit from having fairer negotiation positions. Journalists and online publications will have more money to keep financing quality research and news. Despite what you might read, the copyright directive supports a free press and could enable journalists to get some money when their articles are shared online. Jur good journalism costs money, and without the free press, there is no democracy. I'm kind of kind of with them on the overall intent. Yes. It's the how. And this seems to be a document more about the overall intent. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. They put a Picard meme in here. How can you think anyone would ban memes? Um, because you're the government, maybe, and we've known the government to do stupid things before. Any government. doesn't need to be the European government. <laughs> could be any government. Uh, Brexit? <laughs> um, I mean, I can start naming some things that have been done that aren't quite um, smart. Yes. Just like everyone else, EU loves culture, cinema, art, music. Great. We are not banning memes. Great. Nevertheless, it appears as if the largest online search and video platforms are afraid of regulation. Yes, you haven't put forth the actual text of the regulation yet. I can understand why even I'm concerned. Uh, I'm not even regulated about it, but my, the platforms that I use will be, so I am concerned. Furthermore, there is ample evidence from respected sources that big technology has created grassroots campaigns against, well, I'm not part of any grassroots campaign. Um, well, first of all, let's get the phrasing right. Okay, this is important. Grassroots is for when it's being done um, on its own. Grassroots is when it grows out of the, out of the, the, the movement grows out of the ground by itself. Astroturfing is the phrase for when you are creating an artificial grassroots campaign. So what they're saying is that big technology has astroturfed against the copyright directive. I'm not doing that, and I'm just as concerned. There's another myth. Unlike Google and Facebook, the EU is answerable to the public and to democratically elected institutions. Member states, through the digital single market, aim to make it easier and cheaper for European consumers and companies to surf, trade, study, and work digitally in the EU. As with most EU legislation, the text must be agreed by a majority of member states and voted upon by MEPs in the European Parliament. So next time when you get a sponsored message, etc., don't pay attention to it or, or whatever, or, or be skeptical, is what they're trying to say. I feel like they're kind of taking stops now at Brexit as well. Well, I mean, they... 
like the, the European Commission is literally taking some small steps at the moment at Brexit and some of the things they were saying like by saying like we're democratically elected politicians. Oh, is that wrong? Well, oh, I didn't even read into that that far. Yeah, well, it's because what's one of the main arguments and even now is at the moment that people are revolting against Guy for Hofstad for being a bureaucrat and not being elected. And he was like, well, 500,000 people elected me. <laughs> So. so then this here, this is Julia Rita. So Julia Rita is 33, almost 30, well, November. Uh, so 30, 32 years old, German politician, member of European Parliament. And she has written that uh, a different, she has written a different interpretation of her participation in the trilogue. On the evening of February 13th, negotiators from European Parliament and Council concluded the trilogue negotiations with the final text of the new EU copyright directive. For two years, we've debated different drafts and versions of controversial articles 11 and 13. Now there is no more ambiguity. The law will fundamentally change the internet as we know it if it is adopted in the upcoming final vote. We can still prevent that. So you can obviously, you can already tell that her stance is we need to prevent this. Let's see what she says. She summarizes that Article 13 will require upload filters. Parliament negotiator Alex Voss accepted the deal between France and Germany that I laid out in a recent blog post. Commercial sites and apps where users can post material must make best efforts to preemptively buy licenses for anything users may possibly upload. That is, all content created in the world, an impossible feat. In addition, all but very few sites, those both tiny and very new, will need to do everything in their power to prevent anything from ever going online that may be an unauthorized copy of a work that a rights holder has registered with the platform. They will have no choice but to deploy upload, upload filters, which are by their nature both expensive and error prone. So I think what she's saying is although the law may not directly require upload filters, it's effectively requiring upload filters by requiring what up, by requiring companies to do what upload filters do. Yeah. Should a court ever find their licensing or filtration efforts not fierce enough, sites are directly liable for infringements as if they had committed them themselves. This is the same thing in the US as the safe harbor provision. If Google and YouTube don't, if, if anyone doesn't follow the safe harbor provisions, then they are no longer in the safe harbor. The Let's let's take a, a quick pause here to describe this. The problems you guys see with YouTube and false DMCA notices and false takedowns and ransoms and trademark claims and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All that has to do with the DMCA safe harbor provisions. Some of that is not YouTube coldly taking down videos. It is YouTube needing to comply with the law in order to not be liable for the copyright infringement that the users are committing through their false acts. So YouTube must comply with the DMCA to the letter if they want to be immune from liability for those acts. This is similar to that. I'm concerned about how it might be phrased, but that's what they're talking about here. This massive threat will lead platforms to over-comply with these rules to stay on the safe harbor side. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm adding safe harbor. Yeah. To, on the safe side, further worsening the impact on our freedom of speech. Meanwhile, the Article 11 link tax, link tax, the final version for this extra copyright for news sites closely resembles the version that already failed in Germany only this time not limited to search engines and news aggregators, meaning it will do damage to a lot more websites. Reproducing more than a single word or very short extracts of news stories will require a license. This will likely cover many of the snippets commonly shown alongside links today in order to give you an idea of what they lead to. We will have to wait and see how courts interpret what very short means in practice. Until then, hyperlinking will be mired in legal uncertainty. No exceptions are made for services run by individuals, small companies, or nonprofits, which probably includes any monetized blog or website. Other text, the project allows Europeans to conduct text and data, data mining, crucial for modern research and the developments of artificial intelligence, and that has been obstructed with too many caveats and requirements. 
rights holders can opt out of having their works data mined by anyone except research organizations. Parliament's proposal that authors should have a right to proportionate remuneration has been severely watered down. Total buyout contracts will continue to be the norm. Minor improvements for access to cultural heritage, libraries will be able to publish out-of-commerce works online, which should include out-of-print books, and museums will no longer be able to claim copyright on photographs of century-old paintings. I didn't even know they could do that. Mm. You shouldn't be able to claim copyright on a photograph. If I took the photograph, it belongs to me. But that's U.S. law, so I don't know. Yeah. I, th I think what they're referring to is like if they have um, something that's on display and then they have a photographer come in and take a photograph of it to make like a poster and then they can sell that poster in the gift shop. Oh, and then they're saying you can't copy that poster because it's a photo, it's a modern photograph with a modern copyright. That's not how that works. Believe it or not, that's not how that works. So only the new elements are protectable under U.S. law, at least. So... Only if that photographer did something with their photography by changing up the way the photograph is exposed or the framing of the photograph adds or subtracts to get a different photograph than the original image. And even then, only that minor change would be protected. So that's super sketchy that that was what museums were trying to do before. Renew, basically renew the copyright. There is no such thing as renewal of copyright. Or, or, yeah, wow. The history of this law is a shameful one. From the very beginning, the purposes of Article 11 and 13 was never to clearly, uh, to solve clearly defined issues of copyright law, but rather to serve powerful special interests. In the relentless pursuit of this goal, concerns by independent academics, fundamental rights defenders, independent publishers, startups, and many others were ignored. At times, confusion was spread about crystal clear contrary evidence. Parliament negotiator Axel Voss defamed the unprecedented protest of millions of internet users as built on lies. In his conservative EPP group, the driving force behind the law, dissenters were marginalized. The work of their initially appointed representatives was thrown out after the conclusions she reached were too sensible. Mr. Voss then voted so blindly in favor of any and all restrictive measures that he was caught by surprise by some of the nonsense he had gotten approved. His party, the German CDU-CSU, nonchalantly violated the coalition agreement they had signed, which rejected upload filters, paying no mind to their own minister for digital issues. The planned special scheme for upload filters for SMEs is right, even so correct that this must not be the exception but the rule. Our coalition agreement is abundantly clear. Okay? It took efforts equally Herculean and Sisyphean <laughs> across party lines to prevent the text from turning out even worse than it now was. In the end, a closed-door horse trade between France and Germany was enough to outweigh the objections so far. What's important to note, though, it's not the EU in general that is to blame, but those who put special interests above fundamental rights who currently hold considerable power. You can change that at the polls. The anti-EU far right is trying to seize this opportunity to promote their narrow-minded nationalist agenda, when in fact, without the persistent support of the far right ENF group, the law could have been stopped. I, I don't know any of this politics. I'm not. I'm just reading what she wrote. Um, the law could have been stopped in the crucial legal affairs committee and in general would not be as extreme as it is today. We can still stop the law, etc. Um, so basically, talk to your MEP and recommend that they don't vote if they don't vote for it, if you don't want them to vote for it. Um, let's look at another MEP's. Uh, this is Alan Smith, the member of European Parliament. This is Scotland's MEP. Is he like, no. the only MEP? No, or? we got about. Six more. Six more, okay. Six, yeah. He has expressed deep disappointment as a result of today's outcome of the trilogue negotiations for the copyright directive. Text has now been finalized concerning the link tax and upload filters. He says he supports amendments to Article 11 and 13 because no matter how well-intentioned proposals to close the gap were, the proposals overlooked the right of consumers to upload and share. So he proposed amendments or supported amendments. Yeah. There is an undeniable right for creators to be properly compensated for their work, and we support that right. On the other hand, we must also seek to protect the public who have the right to freedom of expression. 
Furthermore, the right of proportionate remuneration has always been or has been watered down significantly due to buyout contracts being approved in the final text. My group colleague Julia Rita and I have worked together previously to protect freedom of panorama, and I agree with her comment that upload filters simply do not work as they can't tell the difference between legal and illegal parodies and actual copyright infringements. However, the final vote is plenary and will not be until the end of March at the very earliest the fight goes on. I will continue to oppose the link tax and upload filters. So that is uh, Alan Smith's um, thoughts on that. I don't know that we have... Oh, yeah. So then remember that thing that we read before from the European Commission that I said was a little bit snarky? Well, now, if you, if you remember, we were reading it off of an archive site. We had to read it off of an archive site because guess what they did? They removed it. This is where that was. And it says, we have removed this article because it has been understood in a way that doesn't reflect the commission's position. I don't quite understand what that sentence means. I, I If I wrote something and you misinterpreted it, that means I wrote it wrong. Yes. <laughs> now, I, I guess I could see a way that I could write something and someone could intentionally misinterpret it or whatever. But I'm not talking about just any one person, right? They're saying that it was more or less collectively misunderstood. Yeah. I don't think I misunderstood any of what they said there. It was a very snarky letter that they said that they support the copyright directive and that they think that everybody else who opposes it is just plain wrong. It, it reminds me what you were saying earlier about abusive relationships. It's like, you know, that wasn't really, you know, what I said it wasn't real. They're gaslighting and it's, it's annoying. Yeah. We have legitimate concerns. I don't represent Google or YouTube or anybody. I'm just, I'm literally an experienced copyright lawyer from the US. I know my copyright law. I practice it on a daily basis. And I say that this is concerning. Well, clearly don't you don't how, know what you're talking about. I mean, clearly, was... yes, clearly I'm misinterpreting things. Just be being concerned. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's where we are. I don't know if I skipped anything or miss anything there. Let me see. Let me, let me go back to my agenda here. That's pretty much what we had to talk yeah. about. Well, just what's the second. Um, so, yeah, then finally, if, if we haven't made it clear, there, the vote on the copyright directive is, the one that's coming up this week, is just a vote to move it forward to Parliament. Yeah. But this is finally the time to be concerned. Back in September, when people were saying it was suddenly made into law and they were all upset about it, I don't even know where that came from, we made a video saying You're, that's not true. It's not law yet. It's being advanced to this stage. Yes. Now it's out of committee. It's out of the trilogue committee stage. Now is the time to be concerned. If this, whatever happened last September should be happening now is what I'm trying to say. So if you are concerned about this and we don't know what to be concerned about yet because we haven't seen the final text. But if you are concerned about this, you need to be talking to your member of European Parliament or otherwise engaging with the members of European Parliament on social media and appropriate platforms in a respectful and appropriate way. But definitely explain how concerned you are. This affects the entire global copyright community, not just Europe, even though it is targeted primarily at laws in Europe. This will affect how companies around the world deal with Europe and the, some of those companies will choose to deal with Europe in a blanket way, yeah. applying their policies to the entire world. This, we, we have this problem happen in California in the U.S. California has some of the most restrictive vehicle emission standards. And so car companies make their cars many times, not all the time, but many times all the cars are made to the California emission standards. So... It does matter when California changes their emission standards. It affects the whole U.S. Yeah. This copyright directive is going to affect the whole world, not just the EU. Just quickly something I want to address, because uh, UN is saying in chat, in fact, it should have never been submitted to the committee. It should have failed at the first reading stage equivalent. And to be honest, I totally disagree with that point. 
knowing how the European Union works, like the first stage, they just presented the first idea. They came with some amendments, pushed it, pushed it, which pushed it towards September, and presented a general idea to Parliament. And at that point, Parliament only agreed to get it to the next stage, in which we're doing the line by line reading, which is why it took at least six months. So. 28 members went over it line by line to see what they were actually going to write in the directive. And there are things needed to be changed in our copyright law. I, the intentions they are trying to present, I think, are very valid. And I think they should indeed be tackled. Um, it indeed should have passed this statement, this stage, the initial stage of exploring it and going to a line by line and having the discussions between countries. And now in January, obviously, the majority of the European countries are not in agreement with this what's written down. So that's where it's stopping now. They're writing it down and because they're doing such a rush job, I don't see it actually getting ever past the final stage, to be honest. Okay. Because it's still not really addressing a lot of the issues like the Netherlands, for example, brought up. They wanted a lot of exemptions to be made to smaller companies, to blocks. And it seems they're still going to be included in it, maybe not that heavily in licenses, mm. but still with the linking and everything. So yeah, they're still not getting there. So I don't see it passing in the end. Okay. And that happens to a lot of European law, to be honest. We always get them to go to these stages so we can explore what we could make law, what could be a directive. And then in the end, they normally fail. Okay. Because we couldn't come to an agreement. <laughs> well. You can let us know what you think in the comments below and the chat here on Twitch. And we'll produce this video into a released video for you to review. And I'll be making another video as soon as we have the final text, which I'm assuming will be tomorrow or sometime later this week. So thank you for joining me on that one. I realize that's a lot, but it's a major change to European copyright law, which will affect the whole world. So thank you very much to our Patreon supporters. I'm going to be trying to do shorter outros because I know we've been doing like two or three minute outros and that's not always the greatest thing for everybody's watchability of every video. Of course, every creator does this and so I'm also used to opening my phone and skipping past the outros that everybody does. So thank you to our $50 February Patreon supporters. Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Montaine, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negray, and Daniel Perez. Your support really helps us out, helps us keep making more videos for you, helps basically buy the time that I need to put aside to make these videos. Thank you very much to the $5 plus supporters that will be scrolling on the crawl during the outro here as I'm speaking. And thank you to all of our supporters, including the several of you that passed by here with a new Twitch subscription. Really appreciate all of that. Every little bit helps defer our costs of producing the channel. And the stability is allowing me to promise certain people that we'll be able to pay them for their editing and research and writing. So please keep supporting our channel. We really appreciate it. We do need the money and we will keep making these videos for you. We're up to nearly four videos a week consistently here for 2018. Wait, no, it's 2019 <laughs> this year. <laughs> so we're doing it. We're doing the four videos uh, and, and I'm really proud of us. And we're I'm only, really proud of all you. We're only in the second month of 2019. Like... Right, so, you know, six weeks of, of four videos a week is pretty, is pretty good so well, no, far. I'm just saying you should know it's 2019 by now. I should know it's 2019 by now. <laughs> I was just talking about 2018 and that's why it got in my head, I think. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, that's Lucy and yes. the other one is Penny. And hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you when I'm back in the US. Love you all, bye. <laughs>